Good morning everyone. It never gets old watching the buses fly along Edsa. Moving people, not moving vehicles. That's what the priority is now. Edsa will always have traffic because of the huge volume of private vehicles. But if you can get more people to ride the buses, make it more convenient, make it faster, that's really the way. I was so focused on the buses cutting ahead of the traffic, I forgot to tell you the good news. Starting from December 1, the busway will be operating 24 hours a day and it will be free. The reason why the DOTR are doing this is they're expecting a lot more people moving around during Christmas season, during December. I think starting next year, maybe the Libreng Sakai won't be in operation anymore and people will have to pay. And I've heard mixed reviews on that. Some people said, good, I want to pay because it reduces the queues. Some people said, I, I like the free ride. Hopefully before the 24 hour operations kick in, they'll be able to remove all the vendors and the tan buys. It's really hard for commuters because it's so crowded with people just hanging around. And of course, sometimes those are the same people that are... So the good news is that IACT are here to help commuters and even to protect them. They've apprehended many snatchers, pickpockets and other bad guys, basically. In fact, just recently, I saw the MMDA were moving all of these barriers so there wouldn't be a gap anymore because people were squeezing between the gap and then running across the busy highway. The problem is, now they're not squeezing through the gap, they're just climbing over the barrier. That's how stubborn some people are. The problem is, if you're the driver and you hit them, you're the one that's going to be arrested for reckless imprudence, even if they're running across a busy highway. That's why a lot of people were happy with the new footbridge in North Station. Before, they had to go all the way through the MRT just to get to the sidewalk. Now they can just take a direct footbridge. The downside of this is the MRT have said, now you have your own footbridge, there's no need to be connected anymore. So if you want to go between the bus and the train, it's a headache. Yep. And of course, this is one of the recent upgrades to the busway, the countdown timers. So that they cannot treat this as a terminal because it's only meant to be loading and unloading. And if they stop here for too long, all the buses get stuck behind them and everyone suffers. So that was a nice upgrade to the busway, using technology to fix a problem. And of course the bus lane is also useful for emergency vehicles like ambulances, fire trucks. It really helps them respond quicker to emergency situations. One of the things you'll notice in the busway is there are trash cans and there are recycling places. Although honestly, you still see people litter and that's why the street sweepers still have to come inside here. And that's something else you'll notice. A lot of buses now have doors on both sides. That's something that a lot of people ask for. It just took a little while to get Many times today I've seen free-flowing traffic become congested because people stop to buy something from this vendor. You see how everyone's getting stuck behind him and how many other vendors are doing the same thing on the highway. This highway moves 400,000 vehicles every day. Sometimes you think you're stuck in traffic. You're not stuck in traffic, it's artificial. I feel for the guy, he's, you know, he's just working. And honestly, it's convenient. You don't have to pull off the road to get a drink but everyone else on the road, they do get affected. And you might say, hey, it's just a few seconds. Yeah, but it has a knock-on effect. That's the way traffic works. Just look at how organized this system is now compared to before, where you had to fight your way on the bus. Now there's an orderly queue. You're protected from the sun, from the rain. And just look at how many people each bus is carrying. Potentially up to around 50 commuters while consuming only one lane. That's why it's a little bit frustrating when people say, hey, the bus lane is wasted. There's space there that we could go into. Yeah, if private cars and motorcycles go into the bus lane, it will become congested just like every other lane. And it will be as bad as it was before. And commuters would suffer, compared to right now, where commuters actually have a really nice service. And they're moving hundreds of thousands of commuters. So what's wrong with giving them just one lane? It's one lane. One of the hot topics for the bus lane is people who are using it when they're not meant to. Most of the time it's motorcycles, but sometimes it's cars. And what I've noticed with cars is it's usually contractors. They're working on a government project and then they act like they actually work for that agency. So they put the logo on the windscreen, they use the bus lane. If they get apprehended, they say, hey, I'm with this agency. When really you're just a contractor. What if I go and paint the walls of an MBI office? Can I then walk around with a badge and tell people, hey, I'm with MBI? No, of course not. 
I'm not saying that's the case here, but something I've noticed very often. In fact, there was an incident in the news recently, a private vehicle using stickers that say police, but then the BNP said, that's not our vehicle, we don't know who owns that. And then they traced it back to a company, so we really never know. Look, did you see that rider in the background just swerve over into the bus lane? That's why they're always getting hit by the buses, because they ride that way. That looks like one motorcycle, one private car. The problem is, from what I understand, only LTO is apprehending the bus lane now. Look, both of them are now leaving the bus lane. They're just feeling VIP. They feel like they're more important than everyone else. So they use the bus lane. There's a real wonky donkey truck behind this bus. Oh, in fact, they've just left the bus lane now. Is it a private truck? Is it doing the same trick as the motorcycles? Let's wait and see. It does appear to be a private plate. So why was it inside the bus lane? Who knows? There's no more non-contact apprehension, so not allowed to use cameras to apprehend anymore. Not even a license plate on the back. So, <laughs> classic, classic trucks on Edsa. Anyway, I don't want to focus too much on the problems with the busway because even if you consider those problems, this busway is one of the best things that ever happened to Edsa. And that's just a few stubborn people who don't want to follow the rules. The majority of people are following the rules. And I just spotted a HPG tow truck. Never seen that before. Looks like they picked up a jeepney.